listen, I have here with me somebody. Somebody, I'm so glad to come. I, you know, they live in the Virgin Islands. So for them to be in Detroit when it's hot in the Virgin Islands and come here to nine degrees weather, you know, they really got to love me. You understand? It's nine degrees here, y'all. I got off the plane. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just came from Florida. It was 70 degrees. And I get it. It's the devil. Praise God. But listen, I'm here in Detroit. And I asked the man of God who I go to this church once a year, always have a great move of the spirit. I don't know if this is true, but I guess it is because I said, I think he got the biggest church in Totola Virgin Islands. Most definitely a powerful church. And great move of the spirit has a wonderful conference every year, Power Plus. And I go every year. And one of the most intelligent men I've ever uh, met in my life. He got another uh, cousin, uh, cousin, brother, uncle, nephew, whatever they, I don't know what they is. You understand? But I'm trying to figure out which one of them the smartest between him and Claude. I'm trying to figure it out. But anyway, they are extremely <laughs> intelligent. And I asked him to come on. He has a wonderful book out called The Monogamy Mystery. And um, he's really about to talk. I mean, he's about to revelate you, all right? He's been to mess you up now. But I want him to go for it and speak to us. And I need everybody watching me to listen to me for just a moment because I don't need to turn because in about 10 minutes, I'm going to release a word that God has given me. And I just want you to trust me because some good is about to happen in your life. Don't you dare turn that down. Talk to us about this. How you doing, Bishop? I'm good, Prophet. How you doing? It's, it's as well. It's so good. It's, it's as well. well. You hear that accent. It's so good. Talk to me. I see this book called The Monogamy Mystery. And, you know, I know it's smart because, I, I mean, I know what monogamy means, but I really don't know. Okay? So, Talk to me about the monogamy mystery. I, I assume it's about marriage, and, but talk to me. Tell me what this is about. What inspired you to do this? How, how did this come about? Talk to me. Prophet, uh, you know, being a pastor, uh, I see the things that we aspire to in a relationship, and, and the greatest thing that we aspire to is, is what uh, the man and his wife, apostle and his wife was just speaking about. And we all aspire to be monogamous and one man to one woman. The truth is we fail miserably at it. Um, even in the church, uh, it's something we preach at, but we don't practice. It's something that we promote, but we don't support. And why is it that we fall short? So then I begin to take a, a look at the biblical model. But then when I look at the biblical model, I see uh, Jacob having... 12 children by four women. I see David. I see Solomon. I see um, all the rest of the Old Testament saints yeah, where God, yeah, God allowed it. He never condemned it. Okay. And then I had to go to the New Testament. Now she was not allowed. And I had to rectify that and try to rectify that in the book. But then I look at our lives, the lives of preachers, the lives of presidents, the lives of popes, the lives of everybody, bishops and apostles and um, and how much of us fail at achieving this one man, one woman thing. And I had to be honest with myself because I know I love God. Um, wonderful wife I had and found myself not with 32 years, but a failed marriage. And had to rectify in my heart and in my mind to come clean to say, why is it that I love God? Love my wife, but Sally still looks good. Jane still looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and what is it that this natural proclivity that keeps pulling me in the direction where I don't want to go? So then I begin to look at it from a biological standpoint. Is there anything in my DNA that makes me monogamous? And then I look at the social construct. Do we do anything socially? Um, when we're growing up, there was no one who told me that I should be one man, one woman. I was celebrated for having a lot of girls. Mm. And I developed habits. So even when I met Jesus and he changed my life, he did, my nature was coming along slowly. And I had to wrestle with that. So the monogamy mystery tries to decode this whole thing about mon monogamy that we promote, but we don't succeed too well at. So after I've done that, try to ascertain the fallouts of infidelity, the hurt children, the damaged emotions, 
um, the, the woman who feel like she didn't perform well or didn't wasn't pretty enough or got too old because the man ran off with a younger woman. I had to rectify the man who was cheated on who now feels like that he wasn't adequate enough in some way or some part of his anatomy was not big enough or something like that, as our men think. Um, rectify that and then leave from there and end up back at God. And I do agree with, with, with Apostle and his wife that, and, and what I'm concluded that monogamy is, is spiritual, it's just not natural. If I, if leave it to me to my natural self, I'll fail. Yeah. I I will, you know, give in to moral misappropriation. Okay. Even in the pulpit. Well, here's my question. When you say it's spiritual, my question is we have unsafe men sometimes who are more faithful to their wives than spiritual men. But they don't uh claim to be spiritual or to have you know so when you say it's spiritual are you saying you can't do it without God are you saying give it time they're going to crumble tell me what do you mean by that yeah when I say it's spiritual I didn't say it's Christian oh good come on now talk to me because to be a Christian come on. doesn't mean you're necessarily spiritual but what I am saying is that monogamy is a discipline yeah and your discipline must be informed by some code. And in this case, it's informed by a spiritual code. Yeah. My moral code is informed by my spiritual code. Yeah. It's not informed by the law. Uh, the civil law is not informed by necessarily the vow I take if I don't have the discipline to fulfill the vow. So when I read scripture or, or that unsaved man, even though he may not quote unquote be saved okay he still has a code and i can almost guarantee you it you can find its way back to god and even though he may not say i'm a born again christian yeah he has the values um and the moral discipline and the spiritual discipline um of that and he believes in Loving his wife as Christ loved the church. I need to take a minute. And I hope, hope y'all put the camera on me. Because I, I need to take a moment and deal with something. Because again, uh, you, you know me. You know Prophet Khan is a holiness preacher. And uh, I still believe that fornication and adultery is sin. First John 5, 17 declares all unrighteousness is sin. I still believe it's not all right to shack. Hello, hello, come on audience here. I, I still believe it's not all right to try the car before you, you know, you know, try and drive the car before you marry the car. You get what I'm saying? I, I still believe that. You know, I came up in a home with a mother who's super saved. You know, my mom and dad was divorced in 1993. From 93 to 2015, my mother's not been with another man. If she did, she hid it from me very well. But she, she lived a consecrated life. And she always said to me, son, God will keep you if you want to be kept. There's something that was taught us that God is a keeper. And I want to talk to you because it's very true that there are people in the church who are struggling with sexuality. And we don't talk about it. We shout over it. We speak in tongues. We dance. But the truth of the matter is most, of, most people in church are not living celibate lives because if they did, we wouldn't have a children's church. Y'all quiet in here. Yeah. Most of our children's churches are made up of illegitimate children. Amen. People who are not married and, and we don't talk about it. And we don't talk about that once you get saved, you got to teach your flesh to come under subjection. Yeah. That Paul said, I beat my body and bring it under subjection lest I preach to others and I be a castaway. Uh, what is the what, what what is that journey? What what is that journey of spirituality? Can it be? Can it happen? If it can happen, what's the steps? How do you break free from a mentality? You know, my grandfather. I, I was sitting up talking to my grandfather just yesterday. Uh, my grandfather said to me, he said, he said, I know you're saved and all that. He said, I know you say you love the Lord and he's you a preacher, you God's man. I know. He said, but I'm telling you right now, son. He said, you know. You know, my men and our bloodline, we like the buffalo. We move around. We don't stay in one place. You know, that's what he said to me. He said he was very honest. He said, uh, 
He said, you know, we don't let no grass grow under our feet. We just keep it moving, you know. He said, I tried the marriage. I tried. He said, but I just couldn't do it, <laughs> you know. And I know what's in my bloodline. And I tell people, there are certain strongholds that are in your blood that have to be dealt with. You know, when you look at Jacob, he was a trickster. And we love to preach on tricks to Jacob, but we forget his mama was a trick because she helped him trick, all right? We forget he had an uncle named Laban who was a trick who told him if you work for Rachel for seven years, i give it to you, but had to work another seven years, okay? So the mama's a trick, the uncle's a trick, but then he got a daddy named Isaac who's a liar who said that his wife was his sister, but Isaac got it from his daddy Abraham who said that his wife was his sister. These were things in the bloodline that if we don't deal with it, we'll shout in church and we'll speak in tongue, not recognizing you got to deal with that stronghold in your blood. And us as preachers and men of God. So, so what is the journey to, to, to breaking that or getting free from it? Or is it an ongoing journey? How, how you do it? Yeah, it's an ongoing journey. First, you have to realize and recognize and take ownership of it. That I got a problem. That I got a problem. Um, I wasn't, you know, like my sister here, I was not introduced to homosexuality, but I had a cousin when he had a girl and he would bring home his girl and her sister, then I had to take care of the sister. And even though I was young, I had to figure out what I'm going to do with this girl. Yes. And, and, then, and then he'd bring home another girl the next day that had another sister. So now I got two sisters. Got to take care and, of both of them. And I got to take care of both of them. Crazy. One each day. So, you know, it's Valentine's that we're talking. So you got a lot of people buying a lot of gifts today. Multiple gifts. Multiple right. gifts. Yeah. They, 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 they shopping. They're going to hide some and they're going to pre present some on Friday and yeah. some on Saturday. Absolutely. But let me say, the truth. <laughs> That's true. Amen. But, but I like what Apostle says. And this is the journey. The journey is. His wife becomes a beneficiary of his love for God. He loves his wife, yes, but he loves her because he understands what God requires of him. And because he wants to please God so badly, she becomes the beneficiary of his love for God. And that's the journey that has to happen. So it doesn't matter whether or not she get a little older it doesn't matter or not what was standing up start to go south. Yeah. doesn't matter or not whether she had five children and she doesn't look as, as young as the other choir members anymore. That doesn't matter because love has the, the, the capacity. Yeah. That kind of love has Hallelujah. the capacity to absorb all of that and love you through in spite of. Because of my love for him, I love her. This is some good stuff. That's the journey. Bro, this is some good stuff, y'all. Listen to me. I need, need y'all to hear me because the spirit of God is really dealing with me very strongly about somebody watching me right now who back is against the wall in your marriage. Or there's somebody right now who's watching me, a young man, a young lady, who have an appetite that you can't seem to get rid of. An appetite for, for sex, perversion. And you really want to be delivered. In, in spite of what is being preached on our Christian television, televisions today, God is a keeper. You don't have to live a loose life. You, you, you know, God will keep that. I'm about to stand up. That which you commit unto him. He said, I'm able to keep that which you commit unto me against that great day. You know, I tell you all, all the time, Prophet Khan is jacked up. I need God. And when you see me in church worshiping and seeking God and going after God with every fine but my doing, I'm doing it first of all because I know what's in my bloodline. And because I know what's in my blood, I can't afford I, now God bless y'all preachers preachers y'all want to preach, but I can't afford to listen to a preacher that's going to make me feel convenient in my mess because I'm fighting too much and I know the strongholds that are coming against me and because of that I made up in my mind that I'm going to fall in love with him. And when you fall in love with Jesus, see, see the truth of the man, I, I always tell people, even when the wife is acting crazy or the husband is acting crazy, when you love him, even if they don't do what they're supposed to do, that's when your faithfulness to God kicks in. Because remember this lady, 
if a man cannot be faithful to God, he is not going to be faithful to you. Always remember that. So he will keep that which you commit unto him against that great day. And the truth of the matter is, God is able to keep you. This is what I want you to do. Every person watching me right now, there's an I'm on that screen. And I really need to hear from you today. I really need to hear from you tonight. And I, I need you to hear me very strong. Because there's somebody watching me. Your marriage is in shambles. There's a woman watching me right now. You're separated from your husband for the last 17 years. God can bring that thing back together. I know it seems impossible, but God specialized in those things that seem impossible. I, I, I on purpose, brought, brought three people here from three different walks of life and three different situations. You have a couple that's been married for 32 years. You have a man of God who was married, no longer married. Then you have a woman of God who used to live in an ungodly lifestyle of perversion. But God set her free. I need you to understand right now, the ship has landed. Every situation is right here before you. And God wants to bring deliverance to you right now. Because if you don't break it, it's going to go to your daughter and your granddaughter. You know, when I look at David's life, let me help you. David was rejected by his father, Jesse. Yeah, that's why he was taking care of sheep. While all the other boys was in the house, he was taking care of sheep. So him being rejected by his father opened the door for a spirit of perversion to come in. Because he's never affirmed by his father. So now he's anointed, but he got a sex problem. David is so full of sex and so full of lust that the only way he gets, the only way they know that David is dead is they send a young virgin in the room. And when he doesn't move, they say the king is dead. He's anointed, but he has a spirit of perversion. Yes, some of you, you anointed, the hand of God on your life, but you got a sex problem. You got an appetite, and it's something we don't talk about. You preachers, you men of God, you women of God. Sexual orientation is something you need to talk about in your marriage. Because if you're passionate with God, you're going to be passionate in your bedroom. And you need somebody who can calm or can suffice that passion that you have. Are you listening to me? He's anointed, but he got a sex problem. So no wonder. He's anointed, loved God, but he got a problem with perversion. No wonder why, because this thing is never dealt with. But no wonder why he has a son named Absalom who turns on him. Got another son named Ammon who rapes his daughter, Tamar. Another son named Solomon with 700 wives and 300 concubines. This thing is in the bloodline. And I want to talk to somebody right now. You're dealing with something. Let's forget David. Let's forget Jacob. Let's talk about your house. Let's talk about that spirit in your bloodline that you can't seem to get the victory over. Let's talk about that stronghold that's pulling apart your marriage. Nothing wrong. But your mama's divorced. Your daddy's divorced. Your sister's divorced. And now you can't seem to keep your marriage together. Now your daughter's dealing with something 15 that you didn't deal with till you was 25. Because that demon done got greedy. He sees you on fire and he's trying to stop your daughter while it's early. But let him who stole steal no more. God wants to bring deliverance to your house. Are y'all listening to me? So this is what I want you to do right now. I don't care what you're doing and I don't want you to hesitate. I don't want you to look around. I don't want you to wonder. Because the spirit of God has spoken to me very strongly about this. There are some other things I want to talk to you about, some things that I'm doing, but right now the anointing is moving, and there's an anointing being released for two things, for marriage. God wants to restore your marriage. You can be happy again. You can fall in love again. But there's also an anointing right now to break a stronghold, a perversion that's been coming against your life. There's a young lady watching me. You were molested. God wants to set you free. I know you were, I know you were, ah, yeah, oh, I feel the anointing. I know you were hurt. I know they took advantage of you. But God said it's time for you to be delivered. Be set free. Come out of that. God wants to set you free. You can begin again. Did you hear what I just said? You can begin again. This is your season to come out of that. So right now, while the anointing is moving, there's a number on the screen, 855-730-WORD. This is what the Spirit of God spoke to me. He told me to challenge every one of you watching me right now. Every one of you watching right now. Somebody said, what, what, what? I'm going to tell you what, and I want you to do it quickly, and I don't want you to hesitate. While this anointing is moving, 
if you're watching me, I need you to get a hold of a $51 seed, 5185-730 word. Dial those numbers on the screen right now under this anointing. You're watching me. You say, I don't, I, I ain't got no problem with my marriage. I ain't married. So for your husband. So for your wife. Some of you in here sitting in the studio, you need a man. You need to be married. God wants you to be married. Sir, God wants you to have a wife, the right wife. God wants you to have the right man. We're so on the seat, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this quick. I'm going to release a prayer with all these people. We're going to believe God. This is, I, I'm going to put my faith out there that one year from now, God's going to connect you to the person that he has designed for your life, and that the next 12 months will be 12 months for God to work on you, Work on your attitude, work on your habits, work on your situation. You got to prepare for what God wants to do in your life. Yeah. And so we're going to dial that number right now. 855. Come on, I feel like shouting. I feel a breakthrough. Dial that number. 855-730. Work. Listen. Listen. I'm going to walk over here to this water. I, I, I need y'all to see. Can I walk? I'm going to move, okay? I'm moving. I'm moving. Okay. Anyway, listen. We got a woman in here right now who drunk this one she came here shouting I ain't need nobody I, 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 I'm late God gave her a miracle ain't no power in the water I need you to get this I don't want you to be sitting up thinking I think it's power in the water the power is in the obedience if you obey the prophet are you, would y'all listen to me 2 Chronicles 20 and 20 say believe the Lord your God he'll establish you Believe this prophet, and so shall you prosper. You have here, Apostle Abercrombie will testify in one of my services. Gave a $58 seed. In obedience to the man of God, just sold it. And in a matter of time, he obeyed what the Lord wrote down on that envelope what he wanted. And God deduced his mortgage by three and a half million dollars. Off of a $58 seed. Y'all ain't talking back to me in here. If you learn to obey God, hey, I feel God. Stop trying to figure this thing out because God's about to move in your situation. There's a number on the screen 855 730 word. Down that number. Say what, what's on your heart. What, what do you believe the Lord is saying? What, what are you feeling, Apostle? Woman of God, y'all on fire, something? Go for it. My God, I just want to say that you are right on target. Yeah. Because I know, just like I was molested, it was in the bloodline. My daughter was molested at the age of three. Wow. Then she was molested at the age of six. Wow. So I know, and my beautiful daughter, Miranda, she was molested. But God is working on her right now. Hold on, hold on, my Glory to shot. God. Hallelujah. He's working on her right now. He's doing it right now. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to cut that thing. Go ahead, man of God. You know, one of the things that was said as, as the bishop, he, he said something that's key tonight. He said, when you can identify it, when you can acknowledge it. You, you see, when you acknowledge it, then God can help you to solve it. And so by doing that, then you can have what's discipline because discipline is simply enforced obedience. You have to make yourself obey. And when you love God, yes. that's the only way that you can be helped. You discipline is enforced, enforced obedience. Well, listen, I'm telling everybody right now. I'm telling everybody right now. I'm telling everybody. Go to Amazon. Go on the website. What what they put? Go to Barnes and Noble. Oh, it's there too. Okay, I'm gonna go get it. I got one for free, but I'm gonna just get the support. You understand? But I want everybody to get this book because it's deep, y'all. Just listening to him talk, dealing with things that are social and biological and spiritual. And I think every person in the body of Christ and you people that 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 want to deal with it and talk about it. A lot of folks don't want to talk about this subject, but we need to deal with it. We need to and. And we don't want to talk about it, preachers, because we fail at it so bad. Yeah. And we hate to talk about what we fail at. But the monogamy mystery, uh. is it natural or unnatural? Uh. I need you to get a hold, Barnes and Nobles. Go to uh, 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 Amazon.com. Look it up. God is about to release miracles in your life. And this woman of God got this book on transformation. I own purpose. I didn't let her get into it. You know, one thing about scandal, it always sells. You know, y'all love mess. You understand? And so this book, I'm telling y'all, because I read it, you will be surprised at what God's getting ready to do in your life. But I need you to dial that number. 
right now while that anointing is moving. When you call in, you're believing God for salvation of your marriage. Yes. You believe in God for the deliverance of every generational yes. curse. Yes. I heard 51. Yes. That's what I heard. And in the name of Jesus. I call a man. I call a I call a man. I feel that thing. I break that stronghold of perversion. I break that spirit from your mama's house, that demon from your daddy's house. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. And I declare you will not be divorced. You will not be unhappy. You will not be a whoremonger. You will not be an adulterer. You will not be a liar. You will not be a homosexual. God shall set you free. I can devil come on out right now. I command that devil to come out of you. That old spirit of perversion. I call out Kundalini. I call out Behemoth. That old spirit that makes your eyes bigger than your appetite. When you want to have more than one woman, I break that off for you in the name of Jesus. And I command you, preacher, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. In Jesus' name. There's a number on the screen. You better call it. God said, I'm bringing deliverance to your house. God said, when you saw this seed, I'm about to set your daughter free. Now, ah! when you saw this seed, I'm about to set your son free. When you saw this seed, I'm about to break that yoke off of your grandchildren. God said, somebody got a grandson already acting like a girl. The devil is a liar. God want to set that boy free. Somebody got a granddaughter acting like a little boy. God's God, oh Shabba, is bringing deliverance to your house. I don't care what nobody say. You don't accept it. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Make up in your mind. Devil, you can't have my children. Devil, you can't have my family. You can't have my children. You can't have my husband. You can't have my grandbaby. God gonna touch my children. Come on, bring deliverance tonight. Come on, bring healing tonight. God gonna do it. God gonna break that yoke off of your bone. That yoke of addiction. That stronghold of masturbation. That stronghold of pornography. I break it off for you right now. And I can't the whole shot. I command you to bounce so total shot. I command you right now. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Dial in. They'll send you this, but I'm telling you, there's an anointing for breakthrough. Why Psalm 51? Because when you got a problem, you got to be like David. Created me a clean heart. I need you to get this appetite out of me. I need you to get this yoke off of me. I need you to get this stronghold off of me that makes me want what I'm not supposed to want. Make me like what I'm not supposed to like. God, if you don't do it, I feel like having church, y'all. If he don't do it, it can't be done. So surrender to him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Surrender to him. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is moving. The power of God is breaking yokes. 855730 word. Listen to me. There are 10 of you watching me. There are 10 of you watching me. That the Holy Ghost said, give a seat of $151. Quickly. Something is breaking in your life. I'm telling you what I know. Come on, y'all. Let's join hands and let's look into one of these cameras, whichever one it is. And let's pray. I want one of y'all to pray and let's believe God for victory in relationships peace of God, the strength of God. Go ahead, man of God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Father, now in the name of Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord, as we come here tonight, Father, yeah, your word says one, two, or three, come yeah. together in your name, touching and agree. Yeah. God, you said that you'll yeah. be in the midst. So, okay. Father, we thank you right now. We pray for the spirit of reconciliation and restoration in marriage on tonight. Father, we thank you right now. We bind every yeah. perverted spirit. Yeah. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now because, God, you have the ability to do that which we have asked you to do. And so, Father, we thank you on tonight that it's already being done in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Come on, come on, clap your hands and tell them yes tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, tell them yes tonight. Yeah, he's coming on in right now. Say that. Come on, he's coming on in. Come on, come on. I feel deliverance in here. Come on, oh, my, my. 
now. Pray for somebody. He's bringing deliverance right now. Come on, open your mouth and praise him. All about Sunday of our souls. He's bringing deliverance in here right now. Come on, Jesus. Yes, oh my shot. I break this yoke, come on for you. I break every stronghold from your daddy's house. And I command you to be set free tonight. Somebody break. Hey, shut up. Come on, I feel deliverance in here. God want to set you free. I prophesy that God is about to deliver your son and your daughter from every stronghold that has held them back. I don't know about y'all, but if I was you and I was in my house, I would be dancing because every yoke on my family is about to be broken. Why y'all ain't dancing? Y'all about to make me mad. <laughs> I, <say, laughs> I command every yoke be broken off of your life. In the name of Jesus, oh, shall power of God. Hey, Shataya, hey. Ba -ba 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 -shot. Come on, the Holy Ghost in the room. Hey, Shataya, hey. Glory! Hey! Hey! Something awesome is happening. Something awesome is happening in here. You better shout, because deliverance is coming to your house. Deliverance is coming to your family. You praise it. I believe while you praising them right now, deliverance is coming to your daughter. Hey, praise it. Y'all better praise him in here. I feel a break. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory. What the? Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Now listen. Now listen. Now, you homosexual, you listen to me. We love you. We love you. We crazy about you. But God loves you more. He not going to accept that lifestyle. You're going to have to come out of your perversion. Come out of your sin. Let him who stole steal no more. I break that old stronghold of homosexuality. I break that yoke come off of you. That demon that's on your daughter. That spirit that's on you. I command that appetite to be broken. I command you to be healed from what your uncle did to you. From what your daddy did to you. I command you to be set free. And you demon of homosexuality come on if you want god to deliver your family from homosexuality anybody i dare y'all to shout for 30 seconds like you done lost your come on i said shout come on shout hey oh my shout. hey all right i said shout with y'all. What y'all going through? The power. What? Wait. I feel, y'all don't know what I feel. And I wish these people in the studio stop being cute. Because I need, I, I, I need the world to see the praise that's in here. And when they dance in here, I believe in deliverance is about to come to your house, to your family. God want to set you free from that generational stronghold that's been holding you back, that's been breaking your family. Everybody in this studio, dance like you done lost your mind for the next 30 seconds. Go for it. Hey. Hey. But I want you to know this too. You can be whole by yourself. Because one is a whole number. 
Y'all didn't hear what I just said. And I come to tell you ladies, stop letting down your standard because you want a man. Y'all ain't shouting no more. Stop letting down your standard because you want a man. God has an appointed time. And I believe when God sent him, he going to come right. But make sure you're able to receive what God sent and you're not so wounded by your past and what you've been through that you can't receive what God wants to do in your life. There's a number on the screen. You sitting there looking at me crazy, think I'm just talking to you. God want to bring deliverance to your life. You saw Demashkado, Leban Zizabahaya. Listen, 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 listen. I prophesied and I told y'all that the Lord spoke to me and told me that there was going to be storms up and down the East Coast this year. And I told there was going to be power outages like you never seen. Boston ain't never had that much snow. But the word of the Lord is coming to pass. I prophesied and I told y'all to take your money start using cash. That's what I told you. You don't got to listen to me. Because the Lord told me that cyber hacking is going to be worse than it's ever been before. A man just posted like 100,000 passwords and, and, and was showing people how easy it is to hack into the system. I prophesied and I told y'all that God told me that stars are going to begin to die unexpectedly. There are certain things, I don't even know how much liberty I can say, so I don't let it go. But there's somebody right now who everybody waiting to see what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to tell you, they're not going to recover. They're going to transition. They're going to leave here. The family trying to make it a long process, but they're getting out of here. Remember, I told you that. We have to pray and believe God. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to say this quick. That thing that is fighting Bobby Christina is a stronghold. Her mother was found in a tub. Now watch this. But Christina was found in a tub. The same day that Bobby Christina was found in the tub, Dion Warwick had to call the police because she fell down in a tub. There is a spirit that is a sign to that bloodline that comes after anybody with an assignment. And if they was around some prayer warriors and intercessors, and people who are not so impressed with their money and their gift that they don't tell them the truth, we can break stuff before it ever comes. It ain't the will of God for Bobby Christina to die at no 21 years old. The enemy comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But I come that you might have, you better shout for your children right now. Shout for your children. I said shout. What the, I said shout. We got to pray. Now listen, you don't have to like me, but you got to admit when I tell you something, come to pass just like I tell you. It's about to happen. We're in a very dangerous hour. The Lord spoke to me and told me we're getting ready to see the transition of a president. That this will be one of the most confusing elections that we've ever had in the history of America. That you've not seen calamity. I saw war in America. I saw civil unrest. And there are more things that God is showing me that I want you to just go to my website, BrianCarn.com, and it'll show you things that happen. You don't really have to get a hold of God in this hour. If God ain't talking to you, get around somebody he's talking to. You don't hear from him. You sit up in these dead churches under these pastors who can't see through. They can't see nothing. You got a blind leader, and if the blind lead the blind, all y'all falling in the ditch. The Bible say they're dumb dogs and they can't bark. Y'all quiet in here. We need leaders who've been at the face of God, who ain't preaching what they got off the internet, but spent time with God for a word from the Lord. God. It's getting ready to break a stronghold off of you that's been holding you back for years. God want to set you free. There's a number on that screen. Prophet Khan ain't trying to get no money from you. I'm trying to get something to you. 855-730-WORD. I'm telling you that God is Basha is bringing deliverance to your children. He's bringing deliverance to your husband. Every 
And we're sowing this seed every couple. What you waiting on? Every couple. What you waiting on? The Holy Ghost said give. And watch what he does. You need a husband? You need a wife? Sow this seed in faith. Believe in God. Then in one year, in one year, in one year, God's going to do it. I got a woman in here right now. I ain't seen in a long time. It's so good to see her. I got a woman in here right now who, who came out here in Detroit. Sowed a seed like I told her to sow. Obeyed God. Was really not in a position to give it. But obeyed God. I want you to come in because I want to prophesy something to you. I, I won't prophesy. I, I, I'm going to pray this thing open up for you again. Lift your hand. I gave her word in Detroit. In a bad market. At the heat of y'all recession, Detroit, with an over 50% unemployment rate. I gave a word, told her to give me $10,000. And God was going to give her contract after contract after contract after contract. She obeyed God. And it didn't happen immediately. But she held down to the word of a prophet. That's your problem. The minute it don't happen for you, you ready to throw in the towel and give up, don't want to be bothered. But if God says something, you got to hold on to what he told you. Fannie may shut down because of the bankrupt and all that stuff during the recession. At that time, the contracts that Fannie Mae had, they gave them all to her. Because y'all ain't shouting in here. Because of a word from a prophet. But listen, whenever God bless you like that, you got to be back by prayer warriors. Whenever God bless you like that, you got to stay connected because when you don't, the enemy comes and steal what God gave to you. I'm prophesying as a ba -ba 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 shade. I'm prophesying today that God shall bless you again. That God shall restore you again. I promise out of you today that you've been misunderstood, you've been hated, you've been stomped, and you've been mocked. I promise out of you that you've been in a situation where the Spirit of God said, Many people, and I'm just gonna say this as the Lord giving it to me, many people have tried to come to you and even talk negative about me. But the Spirit of God said that this time He's given you another chance, He shall restore to you the years that the canker worm. The palmer worm, the caterpillar, and the locusts have eaten away. This is your season of favor. It's not by accident that you're reconnecting with me in 2015. Because 2015 is the year of precedence. Which means whatever happens this year is going to carry you for the next seven years. I promise you, get ready for your release. Somebody shout in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go by shut up. It's about to happen. Hey. Now, see, some folk be on TV telling testimony, and you don't never see the person. That's her right there. I told her. She was going to get contract after contract after contract, and it came to pass just like I prophesied to her. You listen to me. There's a number on the screen. Dial it right now. I said, dial it right now. Sowing that seed of $51 for restoration of your marriage. Let every generational curse and stronghold on your children be broken off of them. Let every demon of depression be broken off of your life. You ain't got to sit home and be depressed because you ain't got no valentine. Jesus, your valentine. Sit up and pray, I ain't got no man. Well, life goes on. But we believe in God that this year, it's going to set the pace for your life. Something good. Ah! Something amazing. And, uh, and what is it that this natural proclivity that keeps pulling me in the direction where I don't want to go? So then I begin to look at it from a biological standpoint. Is there anything in my DNA that makes me monogamous? And then I look at the social construct do we do anything socially um, when we're growing up? There was no one who told me that I should be one man, one woman. I was celebrated for having a lot of girls. Mm. And I developed habits. So even when I met Jesus and he changed my life, 
he did my nature was coming along slowly and i had to wrestle with that so the monogamy mystery tries to decode this whole thing about mon monogamy that we promote but we don't succeed too well at so tell me what this is about what inspired you to do this how, how did this come about talk to me prophet uh, you know being a pastor uh, i see the things that we aspire to in a relationship and, and the greatest thing that we aspire to is is what uh the man and his wife apostle and his wife was just speaking about and we all aspire to be monogamous and one man to one woman. The truth is we fail miserably at it. Um, even in the church, uh, it's something we preach at, but we don't practice. It's something that we promote, but we don't support. And why is it that we fall short? So then I begin to take a, a look at the biblical model. But then when I look at the biblical model, I see uh, Jacob having... 12 children by four women. I see David. I see Solomon. I see um, all the rest of the Old Testament saints. Yeah, where we'll God figured that. But anyway, they are extremely <laughs> intelligent. And I asked him to come on. He has a wonderful book out called The Monogamy Mystery. And um, he's really about to talk. I mean, he's about to revelate you, all right? He's been to mess you up now. But I want him to go for it and speak to us. And I need everybody watching me to listen to me for just a moment because I don't need to turn because in about 10 minutes I'm going to release a word that God has given me and I just want you to trust me because some good is about to happen in your life don't you dare turn that down talk to us about this how you doing bishop I'm good prophet how you doing it's it's as well it's so good it's it as well. well you hear that accent it's so good talk to me I see this book called the monogamy mystery and you know I know it's smart because, I mean, I know what monogamy means, but I really don't know, okay? So, talk to me about the monogamy mystery. I, I assume it's about marriage, and, but talk to me. God, oh, yeah, God allowed it. He never condemned it. Okay. And then I had to go to the New Testament now see what's not allowed. And I had to rectify that and try to rectify that in the book. But then I look at our lives, the lives of preachers, the lives of presidents, the lives of popes, the lives of everybody bishops and apostles and um and how much of us fail at achieving this one man one woman thing and i had to be honest with myself because i know i love god um wonderful wife i had and found myself not with 32 years but a failed marriage and had to rectify in my heart and in my mind to come clean to say why is it that I love God, love my wife, but Sally still looks good. Jane still looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now listen, I have here with me somebody. Somebody I'm so glad to come. I, you know, they live in the Virgin Islands. So for them to be in Detroit when it's hot in the Virgin Islands and come here to nine degrees weather, you know, they really got to love me. You understand? It's nine degrees here, y'all. I got off the plane. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just came from Florida. It was 70 degrees. And I get it. It's the devil. Praise God. But listen, I'm here in Detroit, and I ask the man of God who I go to this church once a year, always have a great move of the spirit. I don't know if this is true, but I guess it is because I said I think he got the biggest church in Totola Virgin Islands, most definitely a powerful church. And great move of the spirit has a wonderful conference every year, Power Plus. And I go every year. One of the most intelligent men I've ever uh, met in my life. Got another uh, cousin, a uh, cousin, brother, uncle, nephew, whatever they, I don't know what they is. You understand? But I'm trying to figure out which one of them the smartest between him and Claude. I'm trying to.